Hey guys, Denver back here with Duckless Plus again. Uh, we had a video a while ago about a branch box installation we did. Um, it got massive praise and a couple people had mentioned some things they thought we did wrong, you know, but uh, we never do anything wrong. But we have since perfected everything and we're back to this job to change out a wire that uh, we learned from a newer class that is a little more reliable. So. What we've done, <clears throat> excuse me, is we've ran this 16-2 shielded control wire. This comes from the condenser outside. It comes through here. It's in a connector here. You always got to use the connector. No metal to metal. And it lands on our M1 and M2 up here. Now, this is a shielded wire, <clears throat> excuse me, like I said, and it also comes with the ground. But you only ground one side of it. So at the condenser outside, there's a corresponding terminal that looks like this. And we've taken the shield, we've taken the shielded wire and we landed it on the S. That's what the S is for. It's super slick, shielded, super duper subwoofer wire. But you only do one side or the other, or you'll create an antenna. So just do one side. You can do it in here or you can do it out there. It doesn't matter. It's so relevant at that point. Um, and then also we we ran the power feed from outside. So this is grounded outside off of the power feed so from the disconnect you run your two high voltage lines and you have a ground so it's grounded out there we brought the continuation of the ground into here so now the ground is in there go ahead bubba so now it's grounded on both sides both ends everything's good to go we have our 16 gauge shielded communication wire that's in there all by itself all isolated it is grounded outside and not inside so we don't have the antenna effect and this branch box is ready to go back together and kick some more butt. Those are dip switches. <laughs> uh, well, depending on your zones, we actually added a zone to this as well. A third zone, which we're in the process of finishing up. So, if you remember from the addressing, there's a switch bank in here, right here. Now, the switches correspond to each zone. So... This happens to be a three port branch box. So only one, two, and three are, are actually going to do anything on this box. But one is A, two is B, three is C. And it does explain that in the manual. I'm not, that's not just a, you know, algorithm I go by. That's actually how it works. So we have one and two on right now, as you can see. We are going to turn on number three. We just wanted you to be able to see that. Jared's going to go ahead and flip it right now. And also, this is your address for your branch box so you always make this 01 um, the condenser outside is 51 so 51 and 01 Denver can get a little bit more specialized on that as far as why we do that yeah so the 01 and the 51 those are just designations for the com loop circuit to know what it is so condensers are always designated with the the five in front of it the 51 to I believe you can go all the way up to 59, depending on how many brand, uh, condensers you have. And branch boxes is 01 because they're 01 to 50. So we have this set zero and then number one. Zero one, meaning this is the first branch box in the loop, although it's also our only one. This is number one. So it's zero one. And then outside of our condenser, we can show you later is 51. So, I mean, essentially, if you wanted to, as long as you only have one branch box, one condenser, you could make it 02, 03, whatever, but you have to match that outside. So 52, 53, but this, we're only using one. So we just like to stay with the 01, 51. But if you've done it differently or you've seen other people do it differently, as long as they match it on both sides, it'll still work. Uh, we label our line set links here. Um, this is going to come off. We're going to add this one and then redo this, obviously, because. We've added a new zone, so we have to account for that refrigeration pipe. And we are going to redo the DSB, which you better be doing on all your systems. Because now the refrigerant requirements are going to change. So we're going to have to add additional refrigerant to compensate for that new zone we added. And this thing will be good to go, ready to rip and provide comfort for many more months. Oil. Don't even pull without it. This is zoom spout oil. We use these on all our flare connections here. Um, 
this connection we're about to be using, we use the Mitsubishi Pro Press tool. It's a pretty cool tool. Saves your hands, saves you time from doing the old school hand flares. As I know a lot of you people out there that have watching these videos to learn this, you've probably done, and it just makes it better. The uh, fitting has dual bands in it that actually get crimped down. I don't know how well you can see in there. There's also two O rings in there to help with the seal. These are rated to like 680 psi or something, way more than this will ever see. So I've already oiled these fittings before we started this video, but I'm going to oil the back side of your flare here. That way, when you're tightening it down, any of that friction it creates, it's not gouging or leaving a cut in your flare. Then I like to put oil on this nut here and a little bit on the top of the flange. I'm talking over here. I'll just redo it. We're talking like you know, a little bitty job. Just rub it around. So you don't need a ton. And we've had this for yeah, probably over a year. Thousands of these. So the way I like to do these, and you can do them any way you want, just the way I do them, I like to screw them on. Okay, you see this uh, raised part here, the hub? That's where your pipe is actually going to land in there. That's how you know your seal all the way. So I bring the insulation back. Hold it where it's going to be. I just take my knife or whatever, and I go from the edge. I just make a mark. So that's where I'm going to cut it with my tubing cutter. That way I know I'm deep enough and uh, it fits in there just perfectly. Then we crimp that boy down. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it real quick for you. I'm sure you guys have all used a cutter or some of you have, some of you haven't. Pretty easy tool. And again, I just put my blade on the mark that I made. I like to do three spins, quarter turn. I like to not go too fast. If you go too fast, you can fold the edge over, you can oval the pipe, but it doesn't work. It's going to move. So you see there, got a nice clean little cut. Which isn't really necessary, but I just have a habit of just reamed it a little bit. Okay, so now we're cut there. You can do it one of two ways. You can push it down in your fitting, but because this is already folded up the wall here, the thing you're going to do would be exactly like that. So again, I hold the hub and I hold my finger on the pipe so I know my depth. See? Approximately. Put it on there. Give it a couple of wiggles. And that's it. It's close to my finger so I know that's about where it needs to be. So I got my Pro Press. I got my appropriate die on there, which lives. They're all labeled quarter inch and three eighths. This is a 12,000 BTU head, so quarter three eighths is our standard line set size. So make sure you have the right size on there before you go pressing. Come up, I was kind of give it a little tug of rooney, make sure it's still on there good. And then this, the jaws are spring loaded. Here's your trigger. You can do it this way, you can do it that way. I just, just how I do it. So. Put it on there. Then actually, if you look in there, you see the two little grooves that correspond with these grooves as well. So you just put it in there. Let it snap around. If the hole is as big as, voila! You can see that's compressed really well between both of those, or I guess all three, around those where those seals are. You know, those get squished down on the pipe. They crimp, crimp, crimp. So we have. Essentially, it's crimped in three spots and sealed in two. And that's it. That's how you do it. So That's the pro tip of the day. You want to use the Milwaukee Pro Press if you want to be a pro. Another quick little thing I want to tell you. When you're tightening these flare fittings on, tighten them by hand first so you get them tight. If there's resistance or you got to force it and it doesn't go all the way down to where it's snug by hand, it's not right. Strip it out. You have to cut this off, flood it with nitrogen, braze on a new tip. You don't want to do that. Uh, you know, I wanted to show you some of the factory flares that come on the line sets. Um, never use them, ever. 
even if you're using a hand flare tool, cut them off and redo it. So this is the end of a pipe we've cut off. So I'm just gonna take the flare nut off for you. <clears throat> I don't know how e easy it is to see or if the camera can pick it up. It's a terrible flare. That's a factory flare also. So never use these. Um, it's got chafing on the inside. Though. Yeah, it's chafed. It's their stress cracks, which kind of hard to see right inside the lip. And there's actually a secondary lip you can feel with your finger. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but it's just a terrible flare. What happens is you put something on like this, you start cranking, it doesn't feel tight. You keep going before you know it, you've ripped it right off. So don't use these factory flares. Cut them off, bare minimum. Um, also, if you can, don't use the flare nuts that come on these lights. That's their not great you know they're whatever always use the mitsubishi one i mean you can see the difference in size right these are metric these are standard and you're using your torque wrench to tighten everything down um it's just better to use what you're supposed to use you can use these for your initial tightening i mean you can go back through when you're ready and use your torque wrench and give it a little crank till it goes off um we're not ready with this one, but uh, we'll make another video with the torque wrench ready. Show you how it works. Pretty cheap, but uh, don't use these flares. And one one other thing about the Pro Press, the flares that we use there, they're like three times the thickness of this. They're all machined, so you can really, really get a good crunch on these that you can with these. Hope you learned something. Pro tip number two.